250 years ago, Scotch-Irish Presbyterians traveled the Great Wagon Road from Philadelphia to a site east of the Catawba River in the Piedmont region of what is now known as North Carolina and built a settlement. This year, the 40,000 plus Presbyterians in the Charlotte area welcomed commissioners, staff, exhibitors, and guests to a convention center located within three blocks of that original site. Good news of which we are made the joyous recipients. Two events preceded the General Assembly, a one-day conference and the reunion of reunions. Worship, contemplation, Bible study, and fellowship were a part of both events. The conference focused on the first three great ends of the church, the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind, the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, and the maintenance of divine worship. The Reunion of Reunions was the first ever event for alumni, faculty, and friends of historically black Presbyterian schools. Former moderator Thelma Adair was the preacher Friday evening. She spoke about the importance of education, an appropriate theme for the year with education. The great ends and education were four motifs inherent in all aspects of the assembly's life and worship throughout the week and reflected its theme, light for the journey. After the usual round of registration and orientation activities and an opportunity to drop off books for the children of Charlotte, assembly participants gathered for their opening session. Traditionally, this is an opportunity for commissioners to practice using the voting machines and for the stated clerk to deliver his State of the Church address. Clifton Kirkpatrick spoke about his second year in office and noted the need for our church to see itself not as a church in conflict, but as one striving to be what God intends for all humanity, a demonstration of the love of God for all the world. It is out of a concern to help move the church in this direction that I was pleased to join recently with the leaders of the Presbyterian Coalition and the Covenant Networks, the two groups that have led much of the debate on opposite sides of Amendment A and B, in issuing a call for a sabbatical in the Presbyterian Church USA, not a call to ignore the disagreements and the pain that so many people feel in light of 20 bitter years of struggle in our church, but a moral appeal to the church to back away for a time from a spirit of confrontation, to honor and respect our constitution and one another, to listen anew to one another and to God, and to find a better way of living together as the body of Christ, to commit in a fresh way our energy and intelligence and imagination and love, not to our conflicts with one another, but to our common commitments to the gospel that we preach, to the nurture of the faithful, and to the promotion of God's love and justice in this nation and the world. That, my friends, is the message that the world needs to hear from the Presbyterian Church USA. The highlight of the first evening was the election of the new moderator, who presided over the remainder of the assembly. Three ministers, Richard Hutchison, pastor of the First Presbyterian Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jim Mead, pastor of University Place Presbyterian Church in Tacoma, Washington, and Douglas Oldenburg, president of Columbia Theological Seminary in Decatur, Georgia, were nominated. Oldenburg won on the second ballot after falling eight votes short on the first. He pledged to do four things. He said he will encourage all of us to talk about how we read and interpret the Bible in light of the Book of Confessions and our Reformed tradition. He said he will lift up our church, be a bridge builder, emphasizing things we do well in the name of Jesus Christ. Oldenburg said he will be an advocate for education, reviving our Presbyterian heritage to love God with our minds as well as our hearts. And finally, he said he will encourage a new initiative for children at risk. And my pledge to you is that I will do everything I can with God's help to bring honor to Jesus Christ, honor to the Church of Christ, honor to the Presbyterian Church, and honor to this General Assembly. I ask for your prayers. Come shine for light for the journey. Come shine 
as life for the journey. The opening worship service is always a grand one. However, Charlotte may have set a new standard. Held in the Colosseum where the Hornets play basketball, more than 12,000 Presbyterians gathered for nearly three hours of worship and pre-service music. There was something for everyone. Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Outgoing moderator Pat Brown spoke about the role of the church as a community of faith in a world of corporate greed, downsizing, and broken relationships. When we run from the torrents of temptation and the hail of broken relationships, where is our safe place, our bed of security, our shelter from personal and corporate storms, if not the church, if not the loving arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Following communion, the commissioning of persons in mission was held. People retiring after more than 20 years of service were thanked for their dedication. Global partners in mission in the USA were acknowledged. Several hundred mission volunteers were sent forth to serve. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ... Newly elected moderator Oldenburg closed the service with a charge to go in peace and serve their Lord. Many participants left and went immediately to the First Presbyterian Church for a Southern barbecue lunch, which included a tree planting on the front lawn by the youth advisory delegates. The moderator's reception followed. Those opposed? Committee work began in earnest Sunday evening. Sixteen committees processed the work of the 210th General Assembly. There was no one committee which captured the spotlight this year, but several committees and public hearings which caught the interest of commissioners and guests alike. Most committees completed their work on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday morning was set aside for reading reports. Then the assembly reconvened to begin making final decisions. The Lord be with you. The 210th General Assembly will come to order. As the commissioners resumed meeting, Moderator Oldenburg set the tone for plenary by announcing that he had selected Jim Mead to be his vice moderator. Another significant leadership moment came Thursday evening when the assembly unanimously confirmed the unanimous nomination of John J. Dietrich to become the next executive director of the General Assembly Council. John had a strong sense of call to this position his commitment to Jesus Christ and the mission of the Presbyterian Church USA, his proven management and financial ability and experience with large and complex organization. He is well known and respected throughout this denomination. He is a good listener who projects a sense of calmness even during difficult times. The next day, Dietrich told reporters to look for three building blocks of his administration, people, relationships, and trust. It's people that we need to focus on serving, people in congregations, people coming together in their congregations and coming together in presbyteries. It's people doing the serving, working together in teams. Uh, it's relationships. People have relationships with each other when they have relationships. We know each other. We know each other for our beauties <laughs> and our flaws and love each other in Christ for that and despite our differences. And out of uh, being people and being in relationship and understanding each other comes trust. 
The Assembly also confirmed the nomination of Curtis Kearns to be director of the National Ministries Division for another four years. Last year's General Assembly adopted a formula of agreement that would bring us into full... The Assembly received the vote of Presbyteries, bringing our denomination into full communion with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the Reformed Church in America, and the United Church of Christ, overcoming a 450-year division between Lutheran and Reformed churches. The formula of agreement is one that is fairly lean on structure, but really open with permission and encouragement for us to live into being one church, to be engaged in mutual affirmation and admonition of one another, to find ways to exchange pastors, to together find a way to the glory of God, to strengthen the witness of the church by fulfilling Jesus' last prayer that all might be one, that the world might believe. The assembly also voted to remain a member of the Consultation of Church Union, often referred to as COCU. It also voted not to send another amendment on sexual standards for ordination to presbyteries, but it did approve a new authoritative interpretation of the Constitution, affirming the denomination's commitment to consider the lives and behaviors of candidates for ordination as individuals and not to exclude anyone categorically. Church Orders and Ministry Committee Chair Carol McDonald. Because the committee itself was a group committed to staying together until we heard a clear word that we could speak to our church. A word that will neither set aside nor diminish the definitive guidance of 1978 and the authoritative interpretation of 1993. A word that takes seriously the framers of G60106B, that it is not who a person is that precludes ordination, but rather a person's sinful behavior as defined by scripture and our confessions. A word that says to our presbyteries that we do not wish right now to engage in another amendment debate. The assembly also called for the convening of a special conference within six months on the nature of the unity we seek in our diversity and for similar discussions to be held in presbyteries and congregations across the church. It didn't take much time or discussion, however. The Assembly approved two important funding measures, the deliverance documents for the creation of the New Covenant Trust Company, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Presbyterian Foundation, and the comprehensive strategy for mission funding. This report affirms that the PCUSA is one church with one mission, validated by sessions, presbyteries, synods, and the General Assembly. Mr. Moderator, on behalf of the committee, I move approval of Section 2. The human sexuality curriculum for preschoolers and their parents was narrowly approved. The book for children and a parent's guide were mandated by the 205th General Assembly in 1993 and published this spring. The curriculum was recommended for approval by an assembly committee. The Congregational Ministries Division did an outstanding job of balancing the diverse concerns of our denomination and they responsibly prepared the human sexuality curriculum for preschool aged children and faithfully met the mandate of the 1993 General Assembly to do so. Other assembly decisions were also contested with vigor, including one asking the Advisory Committee on Social Witness Policy to examine the denomination's policy on abortion and report its findings in two years. But perhaps the most contentious decision involved funding for the National Network of Presbyterian College Women. Concurring with the committee recommendation, funding was denied. Some women were very upset and asked for a two-minute period of personal privilege. I know that I'm by no means the only person in this room who is a Presbyterian for the long haul. And as someone who feels Presbyterian to the core, I deeply grieve that in this year of education, we have essentially cast our college women adrift. Eventually, the motion to reconsider was approved. Funding for the network was continued for another year, and the matter was referred to a seven-person task force. I move item B, which is 2-6, .00. Assembly action concerning several special reports is worth noting. 
two new catechisms, one designed for elementary school children and the other for teenagers, were overwhelmingly approved for a five-year study period. A contemporary version of the Nicene Creed will be sent to all presbyteries for approval in the Book of Confessions. The proposed amendment seeks permission to replace the current English translation with a contemporary translation prepared by the English Language Liturgical Commission. The Racial Ethnic Church Growth Strategy Report was approved. The goal is to increase membership among Hispanics, Native Americans, and Korean Americans to 20% of total membership by the year 2010. A special committee report on accountability was rejected. The report proposed creating covenant and corresponding relationships for some grassroots groups established to promote specific issues. However, the Assembly adopted by a voice vote a professional code of ethics for members, officers, employees, and volunteers of the PCUSA. The code was developed to clarify the Church's shared expectations for ethical behavior. Churchwide compensation guidelines were referred back to the special task force working on their development for a few more months of work. Current guidelines remain in effect until the Assembly changes them. Overtures related to compensation issues were also referred to the task force. In response to a report from the Special Committee on the Presbyterian Health, Education and Welfare Association and several overtures, the Assembly voted to request PHEWA to expand its membership so long as the new member groups abided by the PHEWA covenant with the National Ministries Division. This arrangement will be re-evaluated in five years. And I'm speaking in opposition to the motion to amend. The Assembly approved a Commissioner's resolution calling for more taxes on cigarettes and strong curbs on the advertising and worldwide distribution of tobacco products, especially to children. It also supported a resolution urging all Presbyterians to work toward the removal of handguns and assault weapons from our homes and communities and it asked the General Assembly Council to distribute materials documenting the extent and nature of hate groups in the United States. In other action, the commissioners encouraged congregations to review their policies regarding Christian educators with the goal of electing them as elders eligible to serve in presbytery. The Assembly approved a comprehensive resolution titled Just Peacemaking and the Call for International Intervention for Humanitarian Rescue. The resolution is grounded in trust in the sovereignty of God in world affairs and the conviction that Jesus Christ is central to all peacemaking activities. Study materials will be developed. There was a new committee this year, the PCUSA in the 21st century. It had no business referred to it. Instead, its task was to explore theologically the meaning of church membership. Together we rediscovered the power of a story as we told our own stories of church membership and connected our faith stories to the biblical story. Life at this year's assembly was not all work and no play. When plenary wasn't in session, there was the usual round of exhibits to see and some new interactive ones to visit group meals and hallway chats offered times to discuss issues or renew acquaintances. Worship, as usual, began each day. Singing led by Isaiah Jones punctuated plenary sessions and commissioners were out of their chairs and moving to the beat as they celebrated the year with education. There were other celebrations throughout the week as well. For the 50th anniversary of One Great Hour of Sharing and for the 10th anniversary of Health Ministries. The assembly concluded just as punctually as it had begun overrule whatever we may have done that was not in keeping with your will and rule over all that we have done that has been in keeping with your will that it may bear fruit in your kingdom. Gifts were distributed and final comments made. The assembly adjourned to reconvene in Fort Worth, Texas next June.